Hi all. I think we should get started. So welcome everyone. Um, a very good evening or good morning wherever you guys are joining us from. This is Megha from Force 5 Intelligence. Welcome and thank you for attending this webinar on Research on Research, your very own Insights Jukebox. I would want to start with a brief introduction about Course 5 Intelligence. Uh, well, at Course 5 Intelligence, we support digital transformations enabled through analytics, insights, and artificial intelligence. We support Fortune 500 companies, large corporates, and agencies in key regions such as US, Europe, Middle East, and APAC. We provide key market research services and some very targeted technology-driven solutions to accelerate the way our clients perform market research today. I would want to take your attention to a few um, housekeeping items. Basically, the recording uh, will be available on our website, www.course5i.com. We will also be emailing you the link within the next two days. Also, to keep the conversation active, please use the hashtag on Twitter, research on research WB. Again, questions. You can ask questions at any time uh, during the webinar or after the webinar using the Q&A panel on your screen. If you go on your screen, you'll see the Q&A panel on the second in the tab uh, at the bottom. So use that to ask any question at any point. Also, in terms of time frame, we have roughly 40 minutes for this webinar today, uh, where we'll be speaking for the first 30 minutes and we will have our Q&A for the last 10 minutes. I would want to uh, go and introduce you to our presenters today. We have Poonam Dave and Anil Damodran joining us from Course 5 Intelligence. Uh, a brief introduction about both these guys. Uh, Poonam, in her current role in Course 5, manages a large part of our market research operations. In her role, apart from managing operations, she also spends time with clients to understand their key business challenges and works with them to find innovative ways via technology to optimize and drive efficiencies in their existing processes. Uh, Anil Damodaran is a product head for two products at Course 5 Intelligence, the Ad Creative Testing Platform and Link, a market research data integration environment. In his current role, he's focused on strategy, go-to-market partnerships, and delivering great customer experiences. With this, I would want to turn over to Poonam and Anil to take you through our presentation. Thank you, Megha, for the introductions. A warm welcome to everyone, and thank you for taking out the time and joining us on the webinar today. Looking at the topic, our webinar today will particularly be interesting to our audiences who have joined us from backgrounds like the creative creation, campaign testing, and of course, the insights generation process. But before we get into the nuts and bolts of the webinar, I think it will be useful if we decipher the title of our webinar. What do we mean by research on research, your very own insights jukebox? To be able to decode this, I think it's important to look at the challenges in this space. The media, advertising, campaign management process, though has been in existence for a long time, has mostly been functioning in a manual way. More often than not, advertisers have used their gut to make decisions or even predict if their campaign, their creative will work or not. Looking closely into this space, in our opinion, the challenges can be classified in three broad categories. The creative itself, the entire campaign management process, and the understanding of the market. Now let's look at what this means. The creative. It's becoming increasingly important to produce creatives that have a higher impact in terms of its recall, its overall influence, and hence for the creative to be able to marry the sales and revenue projections. Now talking about the second one, which is the campaign management process. The process today is still cumbersome, lengthy, and consumes a lot of time and bandwidth. Advertisers still feel dependent on the agency and do not feel completely in control of the process. 
And lastly, the third one, and according to us, the most critical one is the understanding of the market. With so many platforms, varied and niche target groups, and a volatile environment, it's becoming very difficult to run creatives across diverse media without exactly knowing what will work and what will not. Keeping these challenges in mind, it might be fair to say that there hasn't been a lot of technology driven innovations attempted that have helped speed up, optimize, or even better predict campaign results. So what does this space need? Wouldn't it be great if you could build more effective campaigns with your own past data? Or what if your own data allowed you to get better at generating your creatives? Or what if your data allowed you to predict campaign results? Does this sound interesting? Well, that's exactly what we mean by research on research. The ability to use your past campaign data to be able to predict to a certain degree the new campaign outcome or to be able to provide creative recommendations even before the process starts are some of the objectives we intend to build. And this is what we describe as doing a research on your own research and ultimately converting that into an insights hub. So with our approach that is research on research, what questions are we trying to solve? We looked at some of the questions that keep advertisers awake at night. How do I maximize my creative? What medium do I use? Or what kind of creative should I build? How do I retain the attention span? Should I go with a long creative, a short creative? What's the optimum size of my campaign? I'm sure there are so many other such questions. Now, given this, I hope that we've been able to establish a premise of the topic. Now, I'll request my colleague Anil to walk us through the nuts and bolts and share our thoughts on what we think can be achieved in this space. Thank you, Poonam, and uh, thank you all for joining this webinar. Um, I'm really excited to talk to you about some of the work that we've been doing over the past year. Um, so, so far we've looked at the overall context of the market and the challenges faced by marketers. Um, you know, let's, let's try and go a little closer into the world of the ad research. beginning first by understanding, you know, the title of this next slide, um, which is, uh, you know, essentially, uh, you know, beyond efficiency, right? So how do we go beyond efficiency and how do we answer key business questions um, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, increasing business impact? Now, most of the innovation in the world of campaign research over the last few years um, has been about survey, re survey research, uh, essentially being faster, cheaper, and better. And to that extent, there are products, services uh, that enable you to go from questionnaire uh, to field to report. Uh, in about 24 to 48 hours. And, and, and so we've seen a lot of these uh, products that have uh, appeared over the last uh, few years. Now, this is no mean feat for sure, of course, um, but the innovation lens as such can be trained to the analytics of the data uh, to produce insights. And that's what we are interested in. Now in this space as well, there's plenty of new uh, methodologies and data sources that are uh, available to marketers, namely, uh, you know, there's behavioral uh, data that's coming in, there's neuroscience, and then there's artificial intelligence or AI data that's coming in. And so, you know, we've been focused uh, uh, on the AI data. And from course five's perspective, we've been hard at work um, looking at the different types of insights that can be captured from creative ad assets, right? Essentially using AI um, and that's available to the organization. And we've been thinking about how do we take that AI data? How do we marry that uh, to survey results to produce more business impact? And so, you know, we've been thinking about a few ambitious questions. Some of these uh, business questions, uh, you know, that we're thinking about are one, you know, how do we add smart insights while designing new creatives? Primarily, you know, we're thinking about how can we contribute these insights to uh, improve ad engagement? Now, there's no doubt about the kind of value that the creative team, whether it's um, with your ad agency or whether it's um, your in-house uh, creative team and the kind of value they bring to the table, right? So, so that's, uh, uh, I, I, it's, uh, you know, it's not measurable as such at, at present, but, 
But we were thinking about how do we contribute to that discussion meaningfully? How can we add uh, newer uh, kinds of insights using AI uh, into those kinds of scenarios? Secondly, from a strategic inputs uh, that we could provide from a media or channel planning perspective, you know, we looked at uh, earlier about you know how decisions around ad format, uh, cues, creative hooks, and devices can be challenging, and then these are things that constantly keep um, marketers awake. So um, this was another question that um, we were interested in exploring. And then finally, um, and of course, you know, this is uh, this is a, you know a very ambitious one. Um, you know, how do we increase the predictability of the success of creatives uh, in a in a pre-testing uh, scenario. Now there are already several tried and tested methods of pre-testing, and and you know we don't intend to reinvent the wheel here, um, and we're not even talking about uh, replacing them. But the question is, how do we make this process smarter? How can we augment um, the analysis, and how do we ultimately make it smarter over time? Now to understand how we can do deeper analysis to uh, answer these types of business questions. We've divided the you know, rest of the slides that we have uh, in this webinar into, into different stages. And, and hopefully that will help uh, um, you know, us to explain and, and you know, it will be easy for you to uh, follow along as well you know, what uh, ideas we have. Um, so let's go to, you know, I'm calling this stage zero. Essentially, you know, let's identify the creative. Um, and or the set of creatives that, that you want to analyze. Now, you know, for this particular um, webinar, uh, we've just chosen uh, a, a PC notebook ad. Uh, it's 30 seconds long and it's from Microsoft. Uh, you know, I just want to uh, state to the audience that uh, this is not a live client project or there's no live uh, client data that's part of the webinar. And this was randomly selected just to demonstrate both the capability and application uh, of our technology. I'm going to play the ad now, and, and hopefully all of you will be able to view and listen to it uh, uninterrupted as it's uh, streaming over the web. Growing up, I didn't have anyone who looked like me. That's why I started my blog, to inspire people to be themselves. The Surface laptop has already made me more productive. I'm creating mood boards, I'm editing content, or I'm running around New York with a huge bouquet of balloons. So having a light laptop, it's a game changer. Plus the battery life on the surface lives forever. My blog is sometimes about fashion, sometimes about sprinkles. It's usually always about color. Find what makes you different because that sets you apart from everyone else. Uh, so hopefully you caught that ad and, and you know you were able to um, uh, listen in to the uh, audio as well. Um, let me just let me just move on to uh, the next slide. So essentially, once you um, go through or, or produce a creative and then you want to run a particular analysis, um, you know, what, what basically happens next, right? You, you, you run a, a pre or post ad test and then uh, there are several uh, types of data that you're capturing. So uh, in the sense, you know, there are um, metrics that are uh, around memory. So recall, recognition, uh, or if you're talking about reaction, whether it's likability, credibility, um, or if you're talking about effect uh, and the interest and purchase intent. So there are so many different kinds of metrics that you're capturing. Um, in addition to this, uh, there's also dial data that, that you capture uh, to capture interest or likability. And basically, I'm referring to the scene by scene feedback data that respondents might provide to us um, by uh, you know, interacting with the creative, right? They, that they move their mouse up or down, or if they're in a more controlled environment, they may be given a dial where uh, they may move, uh, you know, switch the dial to the left or right to indicate whether uh, and if a particular frame looks interesting to them. Um, now, of course, along with that, there's also open-ended quotes and themes that one might collect as part of, um, uh, you know, the, the data that's being captured. And so what we're trying to say is, 
you know, how can we now go about layering data from AI to augment all this ad optimization type of analysis? And so that's what we'll try and explore uh, moving forward. So in the next stage, uh, you know, the first stage was about, uh, you know, getting the creative and, and, and you know, um, analyzing it and running the survey data. Um, the second stage essentially is, you know, how do we apply the technology? Now, this is where the AI comes into play. And let's, let's take a look at what new metrics and other data we can capture. First, uh, especially for video creatives and rich interactive mediums, we can analyze both video and audio data. Um, now, of course, the same technology is applicable to print digital banners as well. Um, but then depending on the medium, certain metrics uh, may or may not apply, and I, and I can talk about that. So one uh, kind of metric that we can pick uh, from videos uh, are size. So, so when we're talking about size, it's about uh, it detects brands through logo, text, and maybe other subtitle recognition. And it analyzes uh, their visibility within the creative. Literally, what we're talking about is, you know, what is the size that a particular logo or, or even uh, if a creative features, say, a partner logo, you know, what is the size that it occupies uh, on screen? Frequency is another one. So we can count the number of times that a brand element or advertising message is shown on screen. And this is useful, especially while producing analysis around uh, recognition and recall. I'm, I'm sure there are other scenarios as well, but this is particularly useful there. We talk about duration. Um, the technology can capture brand elements by frame to find the length of exposure. So this is particularly useful to support analysis related to um, brand visibility. And when we talk about position, literally the position of elements, the brand, the product, and other creative variables uh, within the context of an ad uh, or digital manner or a print ad, uh, so to speak. So, so you know, you can think about questions like, uh, did the brand appear or the logo appear in the lower right or the upper left corner of the uh, of the creative and, and so on. So capturing that uh, data as well. Some of the other elements that we capture, and uh, you know, this is very interesting because you know, we can capture elements like the ethnicity and uh, the age of characters who appear within the creative. Um, we're, we're also looking at emotion. We're looking at uh, objects like furniture or or maybe there are specific uh, product features that you want to capture, um, and you know we we'll, we are able to uh, you know identify it, uh, pick those kind of uh, variables, and then of course finally you know when we are looking at a video creative or a, or a rich uh, medium, uh, there are both uh, video and audio elements, and uh, you know the sonic branding elements within a creative uh, are especially crucial to analyze, especially while evaluating the effectiveness, right? So audio elements could include the branded uh, functional sounds, brand music, um, or the brand voice. Now, you know, so, so those are elements as well, as well that we believe uh, would be uh, interesting and good to capture as part of the analysis uh, that, that we could potentially do, right? Uh, I just want to quickly talk about how we go about this. So essentially our technology is open source based. Uh, you know, it's highly interoperable and is based on, uh, uh, you know, a lot of research and development that's done in our own AI lab and by the global uh, ecosystem, right? And so in many cases, a lot of the development and the business cases that we develop around emotion and gesture recognition, brand recognition, um, uh, you know, facial recognition and so on, uh, you know, the, all of this is possible uh, within, within the environment. So now I, let's move on to the next stage. So now that we've applied the technology, let's talk about um, you know, generating the data and, and how we can map that uh, to the likability curve. So you know, that's the next aspect of our analysis. So in this case, we're using the video creative and we've broken it into uh, frames, right? And we are uh, essentially, we're uh, identifying and plotting variables for each frame. Um, as well as to establish variable details, right? So uh, whether it's the emotion, objects, and, and some of those metrics that we explored in the earlier slide. So how do we uh, capture all of these elements uh, from the various frames that are identified? Now, what's uh, interesting about this analysis is that we can break the, there is flexibility in terms of how you break it uh, 
uh, into frames. So, you know, a classic analysis, um, you know, where you would do this kind of thing manually is when you might say break the frame um, every three seconds or every five seconds and then uh, map various creatives versus with AI, you can essentially, um, you know, generate frames uh, by, you know, at a fraction of a second as well. Right? So there is a lot of flexibility. So if you need uh, five seconds per frame, or if you just need a, a frame uh, every second, uh, that's possible. So there's that flexibility. Um, and then of course, the likability curve, or, or I know that uh, there are certain um, uh, agencies who might refer to it as say, like the interest trace data. So um, essentially this is something that we get uh, from the survey data. And the idea is to map um, both uh, the frame level uh, analysis that we're doing, as well as the interest um, or the likability curve and to, and to bring that together. Now the next stage essentially is, you know, running the analysis itself, right? And, and so let's uh, try and understand, and the idea will be to try and understand the drivers of variable that are impacting the creative um, and then running any other ad hoc analysis that you might intend to do. So, you know, for this particular analysis, we are keeping it very simple and we're saying, you know, at a video frame level, uh, we've just mapped that to the interest rates numbers and, and the idea is, can we, can we identify some um, insights? But um, say if we needed to expand this and go um, and take it to a more complex level, uh, you know, for example, if you want to try and identify variables um, that are featured that help to drive the likability up or down or, or if to identify if there are any particular variables that are impacting, say, for example, purchase intent, um, that would be a very interesting uh, analysis to do. Right. And so, uh, and so for this particular example, you know, some of the things that kind of takeaways that we want to uh, walk away with are, um, you know, looking at the interest rates data, there's, there's the laptop form factor, there's, you know, the actors, uh, happy emotion, uh, along with the brand logo. And, and then of course, the colorful background that's featured throughout the ad. And these seem to be pretty prominent variables um, uh, based on the data uh, that we've able to capture. Um, so, so, you know, you can see how that helps from, you know, in terms of adding inputs, uh, you know, while designing new creatives or while thinking about, uh, uh, you know, adapting existing ones. Now we can also think about it from a media planning point of view. And so, you know, for this particular creator, how do we use the frames and data maps, right? And, and, and by looking at that uh, data, we can conclude that, you know, for a short ad version, we could potentially use uh, the frames that are featured from the ninth second to the 12th second, uh, from the 20th second to the 25th second and so on. So there are this kinds of analysis that we can do. I mean, with experience, we know that, you know, with a um, 30 second ad, once it's run its course and once it's pretty familiar uh, in the marketplace, um, those ads are essentially um, sized down to say 10 second ads. And so, um, you know, it's interesting where the, the brand manager might be able to say, you know, there's this particular creative hook uh, that I have for this uh, for a particular creative and, and um, you know, from uh, you know, insights or inputs like this, they might be able to say, what are some other frames that they might want to feature uh, as part of that, that analysis. So let's revisit some of the key business questions. So we, so we looked at that, right? So we looked at how um, breaking the ad down, right down to the frames, identifying creative variables and, you know, using survey data and other analysis, um, if we could identify uh, the impact of those uh, variables, you know, how that might provide smart insights while designing new creatives or while adapting uh, existing ones, uh, as well as how, you know, we can provide strategic inputs uh, from a media and channel planning perspective. So it's just to go back to some of the business questions we were uh, looking at earlier. So the next stage, you know, I'm going to uh, try and mix things up with a new creative. And, and in this instance, we are looking at a print um, uh, ad. You know, earlier, we were looking at a TV ad. Um, and so let's try and understand how we can apply visual analytics to compare an input creative or a set of creatives across a database. Right? So this is a scenario where you're no longer doing an analysis 
on a one-off basis, but on the basis of a repository of data that's available to you um, from previous campaigns or while comparing your creatives um, versus competitive ads to identify differences and similarities. And that, you know, that's an interesting type of analysis that's possible. So in this case, you know, we'll, we've got this input creative. It's, uh, it's, a, it's an ad from BMW. It's uh, the automotive segment. And we prepared a, um, an analysis set. So, you know, just for the purpose of uh, the webinar. So we've just, uh, this is a test set, right? And uh, so we've essentially included three ads from the automotive uh, sector itself. So there are three in here. And then there are all the other ads that are part of the set that we analyze are from the beauty and personal care segment, as you can see. Now, you know, when we ran, uh, uh, you know, our analytics, um, you know, we, I, we were able to create similarity scores. And essentially, you can see how with uh, the uh, ads that are from the uh, um, automotive sector, uh, you know, the scores are higher. And so there's, you know, they're scoring above 0.6. And so, you know, the uh, technology is able to identify it um, you know, from this mixed uh, set. Um, and then you can see how all the other ads are scoring uh, way below. So, so you know, that, that that's an interesting uh, piece of data to uh, capture. Now, what's also interesting is, you know, we went a little further and we also analyzed how the creatives were scored to identify uh, the closest matching um, images between the ads that were part of the analysis set. So, so in this instance, um, it identified within the analysis set, which were the ads that, uh, you know, among themselves had the most amount of similarity. And, you know, in this particular instance, I'm just hovering my mouse over, um, you know, one of the uh, examples. So the, so the creative here, I, I understand that the text is really small, but uh, that's, a, that's a print ad from Lancome and uh, the second creative that you see here is from Revlon. And you can see how the scores are very similar because uh, probably because of the black background that, that's featured, there's a model, uh, a female model who's featured uh, on the right-hand side of the ad. And then there is uh, the product itself that's displayed on the left-hand side. And, and very similarly, it's identified or given us scores for uh, other types of creatives. So, uh, you know, we, so this, you know, this was really uh, interesting to us. And, and so we also see this as an opportunity to uh, generate your own internal norms. So if you have, if you pick up uh, data, that's either your digital asset data or, uh, or creatives uh, from your TV print uh, campaigns. And, and maybe if you say looked at a uh, time period of say uh, the last 12 months or the last 24 months, and then if you were to run this kind of analysis would be interesting to see uh, how many of those ads are really similar to each other and and really is it uh, you know is it worth spending um, a lot of time and effort in generating newer and newer ads and coming up with newer and newer concepts when uh, you know there might be a lot of interesting learnings from the data that you already have um, so essentially you know going to go back to the uh, key business question. So here again, you know, we I, I, hopefully uh, the analysis that we showcased in, uh, you know, the earlier slides uh, using similarity scores as well as, you know, the creative variables and identifying them and how, uh, you know, the kind of impact they might have uh, on the ad. Now might help to point in a new direction in terms of how we could increase the predictability of creatives. Um, we don't uh, claim to have you know solved the problem but um you know we are definitely on the right path and we're making a lot of progress so that's uh, so you know that's something that uh, you know that i wanted to say um and and you know from a recommendation point of view as well a low hanging fruit that we've typically seen in conversations with uh, some of our customers and uh, conversations that we're having and a low hanging fruit is 
that we might apply this technology, especially while evaluating a lot of digital assets. You know, when we're looking at banners, uh, in interstitials, and other display ads, uh, there's a, there's a larger volume of uh, this kind of uh, creative that's that's run, and uh, especially because it's run across multiple mediums. You know, it might be, um, uh, you know, different. Uh, it might the same ad or the creative might be run. Uh, across a traditional medium as well as digital medium. And then it might also vary again very differently uh, in terms of the devices that are used. So, you know, we believe that that's, that's one place that, you know, essentially we could start and that's, uh, that's uh, yeah, so we're, it's a low hanging fruit. And uh, so, you know, with that, I'd like to bring our uh, presentation to to a conclusion and, and maybe share a few concluding remarks. Now, uh, you know, we are, we are super excited about, uh, you know, all of this work and uh, uh, essentially, you know, we, um, you know, we're really, uh, all the different use cases that we spoke about, we believe it's just the tip of the iceberg, right? We believe that uh, these are some of the early use cases and that we are exploring with a, a few prospects of ours. and. Um, and you know, we also see this webinar really as an opportunity to uh, present our expertise and thoughts and in the space of ad optimization. So hopefully you found that useful. Um, um, you know, when we're talking about uh, the, uh, the technology itself, we believe uh, there's, a, there's a two-fold value proposition here, right? There's, there's a lot of the deep mining that we're talking about um, that's not just focused on um, you know, it's not just focused on a one-off type analysis. It's also on a repository of all the data that uh, and the creative assets that you might have. So there's a lot of deep mining that's possible uh, with that. Um, you know, we know from conversations uh, uh, in the industry that there's, you know, for creatives that are uh, like your TV ads or, or uh, digital uh, video ads, especially the ones that are longer than 60 seconds you know there's a lot of deep optimization that's possible so uh, so we're really uh, interested and excited about that and then of course there's the second aspect which is uh, the development of optimal creatives for for diverse user groups so so for us you know we're really excited about uh, going into these areas um, so with that i you know i'd like to uh, end our presentation and and you know hopefully you found that useful and uh, you know we look forward to uh, your suggestions and and feedback and uh, uh, yeah and i thank you for your time and mega uh, over to you super uh, thank you anil and thank you poonam for the presentation we obviously have a few questions from our eager audience for you guys uh, let's take those up now so I think I will go chronologically and ask them in the order they were asked. Uh, just keeping a time check, we have close to five to six more minutes to answer these questions, but uh, we'll try and answer as many as we can. Okay, so the first question is from Blake and he asks, is your technology a platform play and can it be subscribed to? Basically, is it plug and play? So uh, Poonam, do you want to take that up? Sure, Mega. Thank you, and thank you, Blake, for that question. Um, when we when we talk about plug and play, it's more like a product. So right now, I would I would say that uh, it's more of a solution and it's more of a man and machine model. Um, the AI that we need to parse the creatives, which is your video or your static creative, is ready. We have enough data fed into our AI for it to recognize and parse these creatives effectively. And once we understand the objective from our clients in terms of what do they want to achieve, that's when the man would come in uh, to, to take that data and do the further analysis. So to answer that question, it's more of a man and machine model at, at this point of time and not a full-blown developed product. Okay, superb. I hope, Blake, that was helpful. If not, you can always connect with us offline and we can give you much more information. Okay, moving on to the next question, which is from Hannah. Uh, Hannah is asking that I'm a research agency. 
how will this help us? So, Anil, do you want to take that up? Yeah, absolutely, Megha. Uh, uh, thanks for sharing that. Um, so, yeah, so, you know, I think uh, we've had conversations uh, with both, um, you know, research teams, uh, you know, from brands um, and, and, you know, the corporate research teams. And we've also uh, had very interesting conversations with agencies. And essentially, um, you know, all of the different types of analysis that we spoke about, one uh, at an overall uh, database or at a repository level um, and, and the kind of metadata you can kind of glean from all that is definitely an area um, worth exploring. And then of course, uh, you know, even if we wanted to say um, work together on one-off type analysis where, um, you know, um, maybe it was in a POC type scenario or, or if it was, uh, you know, in, in that particular situation, you know, we're happy to do that as well. So, uh, yeah, but largely we are uh, talking about, you know, the type of analysis that we're bringing about is uh, everything I mentioned around, you know, the variables, the creative elements that we can uh, pull out, the kind of similarity analysis that we can do. And then, of course, we are open to new questions as well, you know, because we've uh, encountered situations where, um, you know, clients have, um, reached out to us and said, you know, how can we say, for example, uh, quantify um, my branding uh, elements uh, versus say, uh, you know, another uh, partner's uh, branding element. And then can, can we quantify that? Is there, uh, can we generate a kind of a score for doing that? So we've worked on these kinds of um, uh, custom analysis as well. And uh, yeah, so uh, hopefully that uh, helps to answer the question. Great. Thank you so much, Anil. I hope, uh, Hannah, that was helpful. I'll uh, quickly move on to the next question. Uh, it's from Joyce Smith. Where will you get all the survey data and likability curve details? So, uh, Poonam, do you want to take that up? Sure, Mega. Thank you. Um, and thanks, Joyce, for that question. I think we get that question a lot as to, you know, where will all this data come from? So essentially, the answer to that is it's all of your data. Like we mentioned, it, the whole concept is doing a research on your own research. The survey data, the campaign data, all of that is going to come from you. If you are an agency, you can, of course, um, you know, have that data from your end clients. And then we would be able to, um, you know, parse all of that using our engines. The likability curve will be uh, developed using the same data. That's your own campaign data. So the short answer is it's your own data that we will be using in order to develop all of this. I hope. Yes, I'm sure that was helpful, Poonam. Uh, in the interest of time, I will take one more uh, question. And uh, to all the other participants who have sent in their questions, no question will go unanswered. We will connect with you on Zoom and answer your questions live here. And I will also make sure our teams reach out to you to get your questions answered over a call or here or whichever medium is preferable. So moving on uh, to the next question, which is from Victor Williams. Uh, Victor is asking, if I give you 20 ads plus survey data, will you be able to predict the results for other ads? I'll leave it open, uh, Poonam, Anil, whosoever wants to take that up. Yeah, absolutely. See, um, I want to, um, you know, one of the things we've done with the technology is um, that, you know, we've pre-trained the technology um, to identify um, and, and improve the accuracy along multiple variables that, that we spoke about, right? Like branding elements or, or if you're talking about emotion or, uh, we're talk or ethnicity or age and things like that. So we've already pre-trained the system to, to reach a base level of uh, accuracy. Now, you know, when we are talking about specific, uh, a specific question like that, um, you know, we, it, it, it matters uh, or the context matters because, you know, the company in question who's asking the product that, um, and the category in which, uh, you know, that, that uh, this analysis or request is coming from, 
Um, all of these things matter. And, uh, and so essentially, you know, we're looking at um, uh, so essentially, you know, we're looking at um, that, you know, we've got the base data that tells us uh, one level of accuracy. And then when we get the contextual information, um, we help to train the data uh, even more. And then hopefully, you know, we'll be able to uh, deliver the kind of uh, results that we're talking about. So will, will it be 20 ads or will it be uh, 40 ads? You know, I, I think, I think we've seen um, uh, very encouraging results around, uh, say about, you know, between 50 to 100 ads. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's how I'd like to answer that question. Okay, perfect. I am sure, Victor, you got your answer there. So I guess uh, we're on top of the 45 minutes uh, that we had scheduled for our webinar today. And I would want to thank you all for joining us today. Thank you, Anil, and thank you, Poonam, and thank you to all the participants for joining us and staying till the very end. I hope you learned something new and found this useful. We will be emailing you a recording of this webinar for your reference in the next day or two. Also, a quick note, um, if you guys are in Europe, we would love to meet you at the conferences mentioned on the screen. Uh, I hope we'll be able to see you at the conferences that are coming up. And also, a quick note, um, you can also reach out to us or you can reach out to me for any queries about the webinar or any questions you guys had. And we'll make sure we'll connect to Anil and Poonam and get the right answer to you or connect with you guys offline. My email ID is megha.chaudhary at course5i.com. It is also listed on our website in the contact section. And we look forward to hearing from you all. Thank you so much. Good morning, good evening, good night.